I'm John and I'm going to be showing you some experimental apparatus here with Boyle's Law. Now we've looked at Charles's Law where we experienced when the pressure was constant and the volume and the temperature were the two variables that we allowed to change. Now Boyle's Law states that at, for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. What does that really mean? Well, this experiment and this experimental apparatus gives us the answer. So let's have a look at it. What we've got here is a column of air that's been trapped. And there's some fluid here that is going to be pushed up uh, and that's hydraulic fluid. So if we exert a pressure on this side, this hydraulic fluid will, will move up and exert, will close uh, the, the volume on the gas. The, the readings on the scale indicate they start from zero volume at the top and they get down uh, bigger and bigger depending on the pressure. On the pressure gauge, we're reading uh, pressure in kilopascals. So it's very important for us to recognize exactly what the variables are and what the variables that we want to keep constant. We're going to make sure temperature stays the same. We'll do that by making sure we do not take very big readings or uh, we don't allow uh, lots of heat to be exchanged uh, between readings. We might, if you're doing this in a laboratory, you'd usually wait a few minutes to make sure the volume of the liquid settles so you can read the gas volume accurately. We don't have time to do that, so we'll just be doing it slowly, increasing the pressure and taking a reading at each time. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this first reading, so if we can get in closely on this uh, reading at the moment, we'll be able to see that we're about uh, just below 40, so we're going to say it's uh, 40, uh, the, the line over here, that's 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, so it's about 40 and a half. So our first reading of volume is 40, 5, and I'm going to record that uh, in this is in centimeters cubed, and we're going to record it in our table on the, uh, uh, of the values that we're collecting. And the pressure reading, which I hope you can see over here, is exactly 100 kilopascals. So the reading of pressure is taken in kilopascals. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use the pump, and I'm going to increase the, the, the pressure by applying a push on there, and I'm going to take the volume decrease the volume until it is 35 and uh, just about there it's about 35 you'll see that the red liquid has gone just above 35 uh, but we'll wait for it to set a little bit let's just get a reading of the pressure uh, if we can move across you'll see the that, that the volume is 35 let me record that volume and we'll now look at the vo uh, the pressure reading if we move across over here, uh, I can just move that, and you'll see it's just above 100. We're getting there. We've got a nice reading of it. We count up the units. You'll see the big unit over there is 50. So each one of these is 10. So we're between 10 and 20. So it's, let's say it's about 114 uh, kilopascals. Okay, I'm going to add some more uh, pressure to this system by pumping on the cylinder, and I've pumped a little much, uh, but it's fine. We'll take it up to 25, see if we can get it at about 25. Just below, it's about 24. Let's record that as our third reading, and we'll take the volume of 24 here. Let's see what the pressure reading is. If we have a look on, uh, on this monitor over here, you should be able to see that we've got a pressure reading that's gone up. Uh, if we can just get that in focus for us, please. There we go. It's 150 kilopascals. So by comparing now these readings, we could obviously take more readings, but we are running a little out of time. What is the trend that we're seeing? We're seeing, notice, that as the pressure increases, so we went 100, 114, 150. Notice what's happened to the volume. We went to 40, 
35, 24. The volume is decreasing while the pressure is increasing. Now, there is a mathematical relationship between these two. And if we were taking these readings very carefully, the product of the pressure and volume would be a constant. In this case, it's not quite because of experimental reasons. But from this experiment and taking these readings, you should be able to show that P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And this is what is known as Boyle's Law. If we plot a graph of these readings, we won't get a straight line. And we could add to them and get more accurate readings. But let's just take a very brief look at what sort of graph we would get if we did plot them. So if we take a reading here, we noticed that we had pressure and volume. It doesn't really matter if you have volume pressure or pressure volume. But if we plotted them, we would get a graph that is not a straight line but a curve that decreases like this. This type of curve is called a hyperbola because at every point on the hyperbola, if you take the product of these two readings, you will get a constant. So P1 over here times V1 will be the same as pressure 2 times volume 2. So on a hyperbola, P1 times V1 is the same as P2 times V2. Now, what does this really mean? It means as the one variable, like pressure, increases, the other decreases by the same proportion. Now, that's critical that you understand that. So if the pressure doubles, the volume will halve. It will decrease by the same amount, by two times. So it will, you have to multiply it by half. Okay, so very, very briefly, we're just about to time up. So I want you to understand what Boyle's Law is all about. The pressure and volume are inversely proportional. You can check this by checking the readings of pressure and volume. Multiply them together, it will give you a constant. Draw a, a graph, it will give you a hyperbola. If you want to check that it is inversely proportional, you should draw a graph of pressure against 1 over volume. And that will give you a straight line passing through the origin.